Hello guys, Nigel here with you, Nigel's Modeling Bench, back with another review for you, but it's not a review of this, I've already done a review of this, if you haven't seen it, go back and have a look, I think it was about November the 12th, November the 13th, 2023, I did a review of this kit, and boy oh boy is it a beauty, it is gorgeous, got the masks in there as well, and this kit is from a company called Gas Pass Models over in Greece, and um, they are, obviously there you can see the logo, they are absolutely awesome. Um, they, they left this with Sven of One Man Army for me to collect at Telford, along with some other bits and pieces which I've also shown you. And then they asked me to get in touch and they've sent me some more stuff. And when I did a review of this kit, I actually said that one of the things I loved in this kit was the... They showed... Is it on the back of the instructions? No, it's in this slip here. There's a slip of paper that showed this. And this is the shoe schlepper it's a tow and recovery vehicle for the me163b comet and it's a high quality 3d printed model kit in 148 scale now if you see this review and you want to get one of these this is the kit here it's available from hanance in the uk or gas patch models directly or whatever but if you're in the uk you may as well get it from hanance because the postage will be cheaper and i think it's about 38 pounds don't don't quote me on that but i think it's about 38 pounds now, I did a quick unboxing of this, a very quick look at it, because the um, when they sent me the package, I opened the box up and I showed you what was in there. And this was the bit I was looking forward to the most. They also sent me the beautiful Henshaw HS123, which is also a gorgeous kit. I really must build one of these because they do look lovely. So we've got in here, we have the tow vehicle option. We have the recovery vehicle option. Okay, so it can actually just tow the ME163 or it can actually pick it up pick it up like it picks up a bomb and you can see there it goes up under the wings and it's beautiful and it's got the figure included as well and as I say this is a 3d printed kit so we'll have to use super glue with it it's 149 millimeters long it has 64 parts four paint masks one acetate film and one figure and then back here there's a historical brief history there you can have a read so if you want to pause the video now you can have a read of that so uh, it's by Flying, Flying Heritage and Combat Armour Museum. So, um, yeah, absolutely brilliant. I'm really looking forward to this. If there's any manufacturers out there of aftermarket that make 3D printed stuff, this should be a lesson to everybody in packaging. Just look at that. Look at how this is packaged. It is unbelievable. And just like your, your favourite box of chocolates, that one there has come out. I'm guessing that was in there. It looks like something's come out of there as well, which we'll probably find in the box some, at some point. But, um, I'm hoping we find it in the box at some point, otherwise we've lost a part. It's probably going to be in here somewhere. And then, just like a box of chocolates, you've got the second layer there. You've got some acetate film, some masks, and then you've got the same advertising slip advertising this kit, the other kits they do, and the, uh, and the 163. You can see there we've got the driver figure in there. So hopefully we can find that missing piece. Hopefully it's in the bottom of the box somewhere. It looks like these parts, yes, they are actually sat in the bottom of the box. So if I lift that foam out, they will all fall out. So um, so there we go. And that is, as I say, that is a lesson in how to package a model kit, guys. Incredible, absolutely incredible. So let's start by having a look at the instructions, as small as they are. I'm guessing it opens this way. Yes, it does. So we'll zoom you in a bit because it's so small. So here we go. There we are. And I'm going to turn this light off so we don't get so much reflection. There we go. Right. So um, obviously this little book is going to be flipped over in a minute. So I'm going to have to zoom you back out. Stupid me. There we go. Right. So it's uh, printed like that on that side. Uh, you can see same as the box, the front of the box. And then the back here we have um, the finished item and this is our painting instructions. So you can use it as a tow bar. If you install a model, use support under skid. So I'm, I'm guessing what they're saying is don't let the whole rest of the model sit on these 3D printed legs. What they're saying is just put a little piece of wire under there or something. I'm sure you could actually... Um, Put a tiny little pin in the bottom just to have it sat on the ground just to uh, to take the weight off of those legs i think that's what they're telling you so right 
going in here this is um this is like revisiting wing nut wings these instruction manuals they are awesome gats patch models are a bunch of modelers that make models for modelers so they know what we want they know what we like they know what we're looking for they know where where not to put silly ejector pin marks they know not to make clear parts you know three inches thick they know to make clear parts so that you can glue them on easily it's stuff like that and it makes a big big difference and that's what made wing nut wings so special is that they were modelers making models for modelers they knew what we need and you know not stupid sprue connector points and injector pin marks and stuff so here we've got the layout of all the 3d printed parts we've got our bait masks and we've got our acetate film here we've got our, our color call outs which is really nice because they're just giving you the actual color um with an rir reference there rather than you know selling their souls to ak or mig or whatever they're just giving you a color so you can choose the color from your from your favorite paints and then we've got the symbols reference here, which is basically, you know, that's the symbol to drill a hole. That's the symbol for do not paint, um, clear acetate film, attention. So things like that. Tips and tricks are basically tips down there. Um, be gently with sandpaper. Use photo etch saw for cutting small thin parts from supports. That's a good little tip there. Um, one of the things that people do get scared of with 3D printed parts is actually removing them. So here they're showing you the supports and where they need to be cut away which is a really nice touch. Um, so here we've got part number two um, going into part number one. So there's part number two going into part number one. And then we're going to add this little instrument panel. That's a clear acetate film is going to be going over that. So we've got a decal going in there, I'm guessing. Or is that the, that is the printed clear acetate film that you can see there. So you're going to cut that one out. Obviously paint the back white or whatever colour it needs to be. And then that can go in. And that's your um, that's your speedometer, I'm guessing, or RPMs. Um, and then here it's giving us wood and black, so we get straight on with the wood graining, which is really good because we like that, don't we? Um, so that is very nice. So that is actually the floor, I'm guessing, and this part here, I'm guessing, is the is the top, is the part of the body. Yeah, that's the actual body part there. So this is the floor with the instrument panel and everything going in. You've got the pedals at the bottom there and then coming over the top we're back on this piece we're putting the floor in um, and then we're going to add this cover over there so you've actually made up like the little like a little tub that is actually the body of the uh, of the machine and then here we've got the tires coming off i noticed the tires are actually 3d printed in black which is a nice touch and we've got the actual wheels themselves as separate parts there and we've got a hub going on the back for two of those and then it's telling us here what color to paint everything very very nice indeed and then here we've got assembly the front wheels and the steering system. So we've got some little hooks going in there. We've got whatever that piece is there, I'm not sure. Um, not, look, not exactly sure what that is. It looks like some sort of reel or something, is it? Uh, and then it's telling us to glue that onto there. That's the, um, that's the supports. So this is, oh, I see, this is going to swivel around. So here we've got building mud guards and controls. So they're telling us to take the mud guards off of all the... Um, the 3d printed assembly stuff there and then going over here we've got the bits and pieces going there some controls going in it's like a, a lever some sort of gear change or a handbrake there the steering wheel the steering column part there and then we're assembling the steering wheel and driver's seat so that's all going in like so very beautiful indeed and then we've got these little frames on the side i'm not exactly sure what they are Assembly steering wheels and driver's seat. It doesn't actually tell us what those there are. I'm looking on the finished model. It looks like they're just, it almost looks like they're sort of, so somebody can sit on top of the mud guard and hang on. But I'm not really sure. Um, and then here, we've got to be careful, we've got a staple sticking up there. We don't want to get stabbed by that one, do we? So we're going to bend that one in just quickly so we don't get stabbed. There we go. God, there's strong staples, blimey. Even their staples are good quality. Yeah, the, the application of the staple wasn't good quality, but the actual staple itself is very good quality. Um, so, building an assembly of the rear wheel. So this is the little wheel going under the back. And I'm guessing, yeah, we only use that one. You can see here, we're only using that one in the towing option. So don't get glue any of this on. Uh, so that's option one. And then option, and also got the tow eye there, the towing arm. And then here, we've got building the back trailer's caterpillars. So we've got these caterpillar tracks here going on and you can see there 
the wheels going on for the tracks and everything they are just incredible these tracks look stunning right away in the box and then building the trailer's main body here so that's going to be all that out there again it's showing us what to remove giving us a dimension what that's got to be set to very high quality stuff this is very nice indeed and then here we've got the actual sling that goes up and lifts up the uh the aircraft itself um jig right and jig left i'm assuming the red part is going to be a jig which is molded but you don't glue it on i'm guessing that's what they're telling us uh, remove jig after aligning the parts okay so that's going to give you alignment which is i mean they, they think of everything don't they gas patch remember the hind the henschel with the, the the little wooden thing for the wheels for the undercarriage absolutely amazing and then you're going to add all that down onto that and then we're going to have all this here being built up uh, assembly caterpillars side tubes and front grip so we've got the side tubes going on there we're putting the caterpillars in and then we've got the um, painting of the figure it's like have a nice day because <laughs> um, he's got his hands on the wheel obviously but as he sat there it just looks like he's in have a nice day um, and that basically is that so I'm not exactly sure how how that attaches so we have we have this piece here looks like it all attaches onto that round piece that goes on in attaches onto there so not quite sure we'll see it when we build it how it goes if how it fits maybe it can be clipped on and clipped off so you can choose between the ways you want to display it but um, there we go and that's the final that's the final assembly there you can see the how it looks but what an interesting little model for some reason it's got a spare steering wheel there i wonder why very very strange it's got a it looks like the steering wheel can be put on the other side i'll have to do some um, research into this because why on earth when it's got one seat would it have a spare steering wheel how strange we'll have to look into this and i'll let you know but what a fantastic little model. So let's have a look at the model itself. As you say, we've already seen the acetate there and we've got masks there for the numbers. Something I did notice, recovery vehicle option. The vehicles two, three and four had numbers on rear fender only. Okay. So you've got a number one there and a number one there. And then vehicles two, three and four only had it on the fender. It didn't have it on the body there. How interesting. Okay, so we'll have a look at this uh, piece by piece because I think it's worth it. So if you want to fast forward through it, feel free because um, it could take a while. So um, we'll go through each part. So starting down here, we have the, this is the floor with part of the bulkhead on it by the look of it. And uh, as you can see, very finely printed. And we can see these really, really fine little connector points down there which are gorgeous and there's lots and lots of detail on there it has a very smooth finish it doesn't have that very liney sort of finish that we've come to expect from 3d printing and then here we have this is the actual engine cover by the look of it you've got that very very delicate little handle on there hold little hold down holding the uh, cover down so that's very very nice indeed Apparently, I've just been reading, apparently this was used in the two-wheel configuration for actually towing it out to where it would take off. And then they fitted this assembly here onto the back for when it came back. Because it just went up, dropped its landing gear, um, and then went up to altitude, shot down a couple of bombers, glided back to the earth, landed on its skid, and then it was picked up by this. So that was basically how it worked. So we've got one of the tracks here. Um... And they're obviously in two. That's very clever. They've actually printed with two halves, actually top and bottom, but you can see they're separate parts, but they're printed on the same sort of runner part there. So that's very clever. So put that back in the same. I'm hoping I can find this uh, missing part. In fact, in the instructions, it had a layout, didn't it, as they were in the box. So yeah, we're missing part number 12. So hopefully part number 12 is just a rod or something that I can make if it's missing. But, um, there we go. So here we have some wheels. I mean, they're a tight fit in there. 
There's our wheel centre as well. That, no, that's the that's like the drums at the back. That's the hubs at the back of the wheels. And then here we have this is the uh, front. This is basically the front. This piece here. You can see the very very finely printed mesh in there. If you look, you can see through it. So that is. Uh, Quite stunning and then here we have our normal sort of what we come to expect with 3d printing this is like a little fret with a load of very small parts on absolutely stunning like little instrument panel there and some other little pieces as a towing eye there with the, the locks and that in the top that is some um, very very nice indeed and then coming along to here this is part of our lift up mechanism, so that's part of the lifting arms. Very nicely done. And then here, being very careful with it. Don't remember what part that was. Maybe behind the seat. As you can see, it's beautifully printed. Very nicely done indeed. This has got to be worth getting yourself, guys. This has got to be worth buying yourself for Christmas because it's just stunning. Look at those little levers. There's that third wheel that everything goes on to. But look at those tiny, tiny little levers. You have to be so careful not to break them. Very, very nice. There's something looking very fragile here. Apparently, according to um, Gas Patch, they use a a slightly flexible resin so they can get away with these small parts without them being too brittle which is certainly quite true you can see I can flex that quite a lot without breaking it it's beautiful little framework there of some sort how did that come out of there I think it must have been like that wasn't it okay we've got that back in right so here's a sort of co cross member or something there and we've got the part that part there is currently missing there's the seat or drainage holes in the bottom absolutely beautiful not sure what this is here I think that's the steering column looking at that I think that's the steering column it's um very beautifully printed very nice indeed. Got something here looking quite fragile. Oh, that's those frames that go around the top of the fenders. They look like seat backs, don't they? But uh, this is particularly, it's absolutely stunning. All this. That is, I'm not sure. Is that part of the lifting mechanism? I think it probably is. Again. Very finely done. And then we've got our mystery steering wheels here. Two of them. And a little frame in the middle for something or other. You can see that this would have, you know, it's like my um, KA model Scharnhorst aftermarket set. There was a load of parts broken on that 3D printed fret. So they sent me another one. And hey presto, they're broken on that one as well because their packaging is... Uh, leaves a little to be desired whereas this is just amazing there's some, some wheels or pulleys or something there we've got the same there and then here's our I'm guessing this is part of the um, part of the uh, lifting lifting gear at the back I'm guessing this looks like an interesting little piece Lots and lots of little shapes going on here. Very interesting indeed. Even better if you put it back in the box the right way around. So this one here, this is part of our lifting mechanism I think. Looking very stout and chunky, looking very strong. And then here Axles or something is that? Looks like some sort of axle or something there, doesn't it? 
And then here we've got the, this is what a lot of you are wanting to see, is the driver's face, arms and hands. So, uh, very nice indeed. I know a lot of you want to see his face, it does look good, it just looks very good. It doesn't seem like I'm going to have to paint a figure, I oh, know that'll be a mess. So there's our third wheel for the towing option. Beautiful tread on there, look at the, the tyre tread, it's lovely. There's no name on the tyre or anything, so I'm guessing that they were nameless. And here's our main tyres. You can see they have beautiful tread on them. Again, no names on the tyres, but beautifully printed. And uh, yeah, stunning. So that's our first level. So we can take that one out. We can have a look at the parts in our second level. Now these are actually sat on, some of them are sat in the box. So what we'll do is we'll take this out I want to see if I can find that missing part, which may well be in the bottom of here. Come here, foam. And of course, then, once you've built the model, you've got all this lovely foam for your paint shipping and everything. So, what we'll do is have a look at these bits first. So, that's obviously part of the main lifting gear chassis. That's going directly onto the back of the, the unit itself. You can see that piece there. So that's very nice indeed. And then here are our wheels. Nice they made the wheels separate from the tyres, as long as the tyres fit well. I'm sure they will. There's our fenders. Look how thin they are. Hey, beautiful. Here's our driver figure. His twisted body looking around at the 163. Okay. And then here we have, this is the main body of the actual thing itself. That's where the wheels go through there, the axles. So... Very nicely done. So that's those bits. And then here we have uh, they look like they are the parts at the back here where the actual tracks are going to go. You can see they're beautifully done as well. Then we have Part of the lifting mechanism, that's going to be like the part that swivels up to pull everything up. A little shock absorber on there or a spring, whatever it is. And then here we have the main frame. That's going to go under, you can see how small the model is now. That's going to go under the, the frame that's going to go under the wings. Okay, so there's no cleanup required on that at all. And then here we've got a very, very fragile little part of this, little tanks with their pipes coming off them. They really are, oops, they really are gorgeous. Don't go dropping any of this on the floor. And then here we have another part of the main lifting assembly. It's beautiful. I'll tell you what, Gas Patch, you should uh, scale this up to 30 seconds so that we can have one for our for our main kit. Now that looks like machine guns to me, but I'm sure it's not. I'm not sure what it is, but uh, beautifully done. Very, very nice. And then here we have some sort of rod and a cylinder of some sort. These are those jigs, right and left. So these are the bits that were bright red in the instructions. Gas patch is so thoughtful, they just think of everything. And then here's the actual pad. This is the part that the wing's actually going to sit on. You've got those pads there. So your model's actually going to sit on them. And that's why they're telling you to put support under it, because you can't expect them to just sit there on a diorama and support all the weight. Wrong way around, I think. That's better. And then here, there's four of something. Little joiners, little connectors, parts that go in the centre of the tracks by the look of it.
this is the towing the towing arm it's going to be very very fragile when you get that off that's the towing arm for the um, if you're having it towing it to the to the takeoff site rather than having it picked up I think most people would actually model this as it being picked up or they might buy two of them and have two 163s one being taken out and one being brought back and here we have some little pipes of some sort little frames as you can see extremely fragile Probably very easy to break. You think this has come all the way from Greece to the UK and not got damaged? It's incredible, isn't it? There's a cylinder with some pipe work on it. This literally doesn't need super detailing because the super detailing is there already. You've got all the flexible pipes and everything already moulded in. Well, not moulded in, printed in, isn't it? Another interesting little part there. So there we go guys, that has been a review of this gorgeous kit and unfortunately it looks like my little part number 12 has been lost. Good news guys, I found it, part number 12, it was actually in the bottom of the box and tucked into one of these folds at the end. But as luck would have it, it's just a pin, it's just a pivot pin. So I could have just made it with a piece of plastic rod anyway. So that's lucky. So um, it's come all the way from Greece, all the way to the UK with our not so gentle postage systems and uh, got her in one piece and complete. So there we go. So that has been a review of the Schuch Schlepper tow vehicle apparently um, from Gas Patch Models. I would recommend you go and get one because if you think about it, if you've got the 163, okay, so if you've got the 163 and you've got this, there's a diorama on your hands instantly. You can also get, there is an upgrade set for that kit, which they've also sent me, which I will review on another day. And that also comes with the pilot figure. So you could have this, having lifted up his, his um, 163, and the pilot stood next to it watching on, having just completed a mission. So, uh, yeah, incredible. Absolutely incredible. I really will build this because it just, well, it's almost too nice to build because it's like a piece of art on its own, isn't it? Before you even take it out of the box. It's just beautiful. So um, thank you very much to Gas Patch Models. I absolutely gobsmacked by what you've sent me. And uh, they've emailed me and thanked me for my reviews. And apparently they're sending me more stuff. So I just can't wait. Um, it's just everything I get from these people is just stunning. And if it wasn't stunning, I would say so. Um, the only thing I would say about this, I wish it was a plastic you could put together with extra thin rather than having to use super glue. Maybe you can. I'll have a look. Maybe... Uh, Maybe in the notes it says you can use some um, extra thin. We shall see. But well, I very much doubt it because it's going to be 3D printed resin. So, yeah, it says you use CN Acrylate for, for assembly. So, um, that's okay. We've got the uh, we've got the perfect CN Acrylate for this model. And it's this one here, which is the Flexi 5KA XT Thin. But also you've got this one here, which is the... Flexi 5KA Black Thin. So if you use the Black Thin, it takes a little bit longer to dry, so you get a bit more time to position stuff. But also you can see where the glue is, so you can mop up if, you, um, if you've if you got a bit too much on there. Whereas with the clear stuff, you can't really see it until it's too late and you put primer on. And you see, like, you know, you've glued this little grab rail on there and you've got a great blob of glue at the bottom of it. Whereas with this, you can see it. So that's what I'll be using to assemble this. And I've also sometimes mixed the two, and it makes this one a little bit, quicker to dry which can be handy because sometimes this taking so long to dry is a bit of a pain but um there we go so thank you for watching i hope you liked it if you haven't already please hit the subscribe down there um please leave a comment tell me what you think of the model and if you've enjoyed the video video please give us a thumbs up and if you hadn't give us a thumbs down so there we go thank you for watching bye for now